expansion of $124.6 billion just for May, and um, where we only had a $57 billion shortfall in 2011, it's $124.6 billion this May. Now, no, no country can sustain uh, economic viability with that type of massive overspending. So, I mean, these numbers are almost incomprehensible to most people. They're mixing millions and billions and trillions. And, you know, the president was whining about George Bush's four trillion in debt in, in eight years. And he's got five trillion in three and a half years of new debt. Absolutely right. And that's a big concern for the American public. They see this debt and it has become a concern from them. It was a concern for conservatives back in 2004. It's a concern now of an overwhelming majority of the American public. They want something to be done about the debt. And they know that debt comes from spending. You can't get here without spending. And so with an increase in spending from this administration, with having Three years where the debt has been over a trillion dollars with only one month, one month out of the 40 something months that he's been in office so far, has there actually been a, you know, a surplus of a budget for only one month is a concern to the American public. They've seen over the course of the past few years that they've had to tighten their belts, that in a down economy, they had to make tough decisions. And there's a disconnect between Washington and the average family. Washington isn't making those tough decisions that everyone else in the nation is. Well, that's a good point. I mean, no, nobody would survive if if they borrowed forty cents of every dollar they spend, and no. yet the government that's can print right. money, and uh, that's what they have been doing. And they have been manipulating the economy, and they're making false promises that never be able to sustain it. I guess the bigger, broader picture is this: I have personally, and I'm not an economic advisor, and I don't, I don't claim to be one. And you know a lot more about the economy than I do. Um, I don't have any confidence in the stock market, and I've taken a majority, not all of it, because I believe in a diversified portfolio, but I've taken most of my money out of the stock market. I don't feel good about it. I don't have confidence in it. Um, you know, some of the things that I have been looking at is you know, some, some real estate, little investment things, no, nothing major, just little stuff. Um, but most of my money I just keep in cash, and I only want to just kind of protect, you know, what I've been able to save over the years. And I think most people are like me if, if they're able to save any more at all. So what, what do you recommend for the person that's listening to this program that wants to preserve what they've been able to save or maybe even get on a you know, good investment track? Where do they go now? You know, I think right now we're in a very volatile situation. You have businesses, you have the stock market, you have Europe, you have so many things that are just in question right now with so much uncertainty out there. You know, I think what, you, what you're doing is basically what everyone else should be doing. And that's just hanging on to their dollars and trying to spend um, as little as they possibly can. And we even asked this in our poll, what are you actually doing? Are you going on a vacation this year? And 60% of Americans said they're not even taking a vacation this year. And this is a sign mm. that people are just hanging on to their money right now. And I think people are starting to feel that uncertainty. And so, you, so you're saying don't invest in anything. I mean, in other I words, mean, I I'm not a big investor, so I, I don't I don't claim to be giving good investment advice. But, you know, if you look at what the CBO warnings have said, the CBO Congressional Budget Office came out and said, hey, we are going to hit a fiscal cliff next year. We could potentially be back in a recession. So and with that uncertainty, the uncertainty of what the tax structure is going to be like next year, the uncertainty with the debt ceiling, the debate that is going to happen this year, and if we could potentially get well, What about my again? financial guy who's a really good guy, and he always looks at the stock market through the prism of history. And he says, as things go down, that's the time that people ought to be buying, not when it's at its high. Mm -hmm. um, and he thinks that there's going to be more opportunities because he believes, yeah, the stock market will go down and that creates opportunity. I, I just don't have the confidence. I'm not a gambler. I mean, except for, you know, a little blackjack in Vegas once in a while. But even then, I'm not betting the milk money by any means. Exactly. I don't think anyone is in that position right now where they can feel comfortable gambling with money. That so you just leave it in a bank? You leave it in a bond? I mean, do you even trust treasury bonds or is that just idiotic, catastrophic, doom and gloom thinking? You know, I, I, I think it's up to everyone in their own – what they have – like you said, everyone has a different – a different um, willingness of what risk they're willing to take. And I think a lot of it depends on that right now. And I think with this uncertainty that is out there, I think everyone has to really weigh those decisions that so, they're so making. You, and so, you, you put, with them. so if people have any amount of money that they're saving, what do they put a different amount of money in all these different bank accounts and hope that, um, hope that the FDIC insures <laughs> it all when, when, you know, when it all hits the fan. And for example, what happens in worst case scenario? Let's just assume um, as you see what's happening in, in Greece and Spain and, and to some extent Italy in particular, I mean, Greece, everybody's pulling their money out of these banks. 
Same thing in Spain. They're pulling the money out of the banks. They have no faith about what's going to happen. So, so Greece is going belly up, basically. They'll be out of the euro. Spain, Italy, Portugal, maybe Ireland, you know, maybe in the next few years, not far away from following. So what happens if the euro collapses? What happens if all these currencies, new currencies come on the scene? Does that make America more attractive? I, I read an article yesterday that people in China are investing in U.S. Uh, real estate because yeah. they, they think the prices are depressed. Well, sometimes when you have a, a change in the currencies like that, it does help with the U.S. I mean, re remember just a few years back when we had a down economy, people were bringing empty suitcases over to the U.S., buying our goods and then taking them back. So anytime there's a change in the global currency, it has tended over the course of the past few years to benefit the U.S. But, you know, when it comes to real estate in China, yeah, that seems to be something that is a, a popular item right now. And it's just it, it makes you wonder what they know that we don't know. Can America...